Happy Tiny Home Tuesday, everyone. It This email definitely comes to you uh, with a heavy heart because so much is going on in the world. I know that if you're listening to this, um, you're feeling it too. You know, for those of us that may be kind of more on the front lines of it or uh, for myself, we're a couple hours north of a major metropolis, San Francisco. We're not quite having the experience here on the streets, um, that which is what we see on the phone. I'm sorry, on the on the news. Actually, I just got off the phone with someone that's like, I can't really have a call right now. I need to board up the windows. They're in Tampa because there's going to be rioting later. I'm like, oh my goodness. So blessing, big breath. And I want to give you some good news um, in terms of what just happened from the last weekend's workshop. I asked a question, what's your number one reason for going tiny? And I wanted to answer and share these answers with you because you may find there's some commonality or thread um, in them. In fact, there's a big thread here. And I'll tell you about the second question in a moment. So what's your number one reason for going tiny? And I saved the names out because, um, you know, they're all people. They all came from people. I didn't just make them up, I promise. Uh, but the all are said a certain way, but there is definitely the three thread. Let me let me see if you catch the thread. Top two are a tie, financial and regenerative sustainable. I want to go tiny because I don't believe in rent and I'm seduced by financial freedom. Long-term sustainability. I'm going tiny to have financial freedom. Breathing room. I want to go tiny because I don't believe in rent and am seduced by financial freedom. That was, oops, twice. <laughs> Number one reason for going tiny is being able to afford my own custom tiny home. Number one reason for going tiny is financial liberation. Going tiny will help me live in my values, putting people, sustainability, and experiences first above stuff. Been in healthcare for 15 years. Retire early. I'm suffocating with things. I want to live free. Environmental independence. To have my own space I design for me and not pay rent down the drain. So for me, I definitely see a lot of layers in regards to financial freedom, um, either saving money or having the ability uh, to do more with the money that you do have. And, you know, if we were in a workshop together, I would say, okay, write your number one reason and then go a little deeper. Why? You know, what does having more financial freedom really give to you. It, for some people, maybe more time to spend with my family and friends. For other people, uh, more time to travel, obviously when we can, safely. Um, for other people, it may be just helping, you know, family members out. Um, right now, in what we're dealing with, with so much uncertainty in the world uh, with regards to the COVID-19 and um, so much response obviously happening in a, in a swirl of, you know, some people doing some pretty violent stuff to businesses. I'm not a support of that. Um, I am definitely all for speaking our voice because that is the country we live in. Um, but not of damaging property. That's, that doesn't do anything. So speaking of property, um, it's an opportunity for us to really dig deep into what our own reason is for going tiny. For me, it was home ownership. It was definitely financial freedom because I couldn't imagine signing my life away. At the time, I was living in Marin. And whether you're in Marin or Santa Rosa, California, you're looking at five hundred dollars to $700,000. You know, that's half a million to almost a million dollars of money that I signed myself, you know, and locked to. What if things change? What if I want to go on sabbatical? What if I get sick? What if my husband gets sick? What if we don't want to work that hard? I think that was my biggest motivating factor. I'm like, I don't want to work that hard and be slave to that much debt. Um, as much as I love a home, I wanted my own home. So tiny homes were, were the wonderful opportunity. Now, there's one of the biggest challenges. That's the second question I mentioned I was going to ask. What's your biggest challenge or obstacle blocking you from realizing your dream? And on the workshop, pretty much 80% of the people, uh, or maybe even 90, where do I park my tiny home? If that's you, raise your hand. 
even if no one's around, <laughs> just raise it. And if that's you, then I want to do a deeper dive into really that that whole that whole thing. If that's what's is that if that is what's holding you back or creating, you know, basically a barrier for moving forward, then we need to solve that. Okay, that is something that is solvable. Is it super easy? Is it, you know, just click buttons and like we're totally talking like normal life with with renting homes and buying homes? Not so much. It it goes into new directions, but there's ways to do it. And I know because I have looked for places uh, on a temporary basis when we were traveling. I've also looked for places that are more semi-permanent and I'm still in the process of looking for that you know, ultimate place where I can stay for five or six or seven years, maybe even 10, maybe even forever. I mean, really there is no forever, right? That's why it's so important to take care of family and friends and the people that you love because so much going on in the world um, that, you know, what's really going to drive your dream is how you move through those obstacles and challenges. And I am not telling you anything that I haven't done personally. Our builder went bust in the middle of our build. <laughs> that was not something I signed up for, but obviously I did. I did. And we took back our home and I had to basically go through the design and planning stage twice. Okay. So I am super happy to hop on a call with you 20 minutes to talk more about what your own dream is. And I will absolutely invite you to a one hour strategy call if that works for you. If that's something that won't work for you and you're just wanting to have a chat and kind of figure out where things are, happy to do that regardless. So I'm uber, uber, uber committed to people realizing their tiny home dreams. There is a lot going on in the world right now. And if there's one thing that I can do is give people financial liberation, financial freedom, breathing room from their stuff, uh, more environmental independence, uh, more space to design their own custom tiny home, I'm going to do that. That is what I've signed up for, and that is my purpose in life right now. I've gone through two other career paths. I'm over 50, so I am uniquely qualified. <laughs> I am not a spring chicken, but I am a seasoned chicken. I am uniquely qualified because I've been there, done that, through other careers and industries and house flipping and you name it, and also tiny homes. I know certifications. I know design. I know what it's like to recover after a builder goes bust and come out and drive around the country for 6,000 miles. Not that I'm saying you have to do that. In fact, most people don't. So I'm Lindsay. I look forward to connecting with you. Click on that 20 minute call. I also have a survey button because I have two questions. What's your number one reason for going tiny? And what's your number one obstacle uh, for making your dreams come true? All right, everyone. Happy Tiny Home Tuesday. Stay safe. Be well. Blessings to all of you.